Today I'm going to see how the Sony a7 III intervalometer copes with a day to night time lapse. Since Sony gave us this interval function in the a7 III and the a7R III, I've been really interested to see how it copes with a day to night time lapse. This is shooting from before sunset right through to after sunset and into nighttime. It's also known as the holy grail of time lapses because the exposure changes so much, it's really hard for your camera to cope and keep up with all of these changes. Now there are three issues with day to night time lapses. The first one is where you have the camera set to auto, you sometimes get flicker in the shot. And this is due to the aperture changing ever so slightly between each shot. The second way is when you have big steps in the exposure in your time lapse. This is due to the camera not quite keeping up with the small changes in exposure and then all of a sudden making a big change at one time. The third thing is when you keep everything in manual settings. The time lapse will just fade to black and everything will get darker and darker. And this doesn't look great, especially if you want to carry on into an astrophotography time lapse. If you do have flicker or small steps in your sequence, a program like LR Time Lapse will get rid of these and iron them out quite nicely. However, it does increase the length of the workflow quite a bit. So I want to know if the A7 III smooths out these steps and this flicker in camera. This would be great because then you wouldn't need a program like LR Time Lapse. I'm also going to go through the settings that I put in the camera so then you can decide which one you like best. So if you want to emulate any of these time lapses, you can really easily. So first of all, you need to work out how long the time lapse needs to be to go from daytime to nighttime. I find that the app Photo Pills is great for this. I'll open up the app, I'll click on the sun logo, and this will then tell me when the golden hour is, when the sunset is gonna be, and when it goes into nighttime. At this location, Golden hour starts at 5.35, sunset is at 6.05, blue hour is at 6.20, and then nighttime starts at 7.20. So in theory, I could keep the time lapse going for around about two hours, and I'll go from just before golden hour right through into nighttime. I'm actually gonna keep it going for three hours, so I'll have half an hour before golden hour, and then half an hour after nighttime. Say if you want a decent amount of the Milky Way in your time lapse, Photo Pills will also show you when the galactic core will become visible, so you can add this into your equation if needed. However, because I'm shooting in a city environment, I won't really be able to see that many stars, so I'm just going to keep it going for around about half an hour after nighttime. Now, the time it will take you to shoot this time lapse will depend on where you are on the planet. For instance, I've programmed Glasgow into the location in PhotoPills, and it says that golden hour will start at 5.58, the sun will set at 6.48, but then we won't have nighttime until 8.52. So to get the same amount of transition from daytime to nighttime in Glasgow compared to here in Dubai, I'd have to shoot for three hours instead of two hours. And this is why you need to plan and calculate this properly so you know you have enough room on your SD card and enough battery power to get the time lapse you want. To calculate a time lapse covering three hours, to be on the safe side, I'm gonna get around about 2000 shots. I know this should be good from experience, but if you have space on your SD card, it's better to get more shots than less. So for three hours, that equates to 180 minutes. And to work it out into seconds, times 180 by 60 which gives you 10,800 seconds. Now I divide this by 2,000, which is the amount of shots that I want, which gives me 5.4. So the interval time should be around about 5.4 seconds. I'm going to round this up and keep my interval to six seconds. One thing to take into consideration is the framing of your shot. When you take a photograph, your camera will normally be set to a three by two ratio. However, when you output the time lapse as a video, you'll more than likely have it set to 16 by 9. So when you are framing your shot up, just think about this. You can also change the aspect ratio in tab 1, page 1 of 14, to 16 by 9. I just prefer to keep it in 3 by 2 so I have more pixels to work with when editing. I always keep the camera in raw and uncompressed when shooting a time lapse sequence. 
This gives me the best dynamic range and the best quality possible. Also, when shooting these sequences, you need to make sure you have enough space on your SD card. I always make sure I have enough room for at least 2000 images. With the A7 III in RAW uncompressed, this means a 128 gigabyte card. As I want the camera to keep up with the exposure changes, I'll set it to aperture priority. I also set the exposure compensation to minus one to protect the highlights. As it's an uncompressed RAW file, the camera is more than capable of handling this drop in exposure. I'll also set ISO to auto. So go to tab one, nine of 14 to ISO. Set it to auto, press right, and then set your max and minimum settings. This is where you can tell the camera not to go too high with the ISO. I normally keep it to a maximum of 8,000 and I'll keep the minimum on 100. If ISO 8000 is too much for you, this is where you would change it to a lower setting. In tab one, nine out of 14, I'll click on auto ISO minimum shutter speed, and I'll set this to 15 seconds. Next, go to tab one, four of 14, interval shoot function. I'll turn interval shooting on with a two second delay. I'll set my shoot interval to six seconds, and I'll set the number of shots to 2000. At the bottom of this page, you can see how long this number of shots at this interval will take. So if you take 2000 shots, it's approximately three hours and 20 minutes. If you want to cover a longer time, you would increase your shoot interval or you would increase your number of shots. But I showed you earlier in this video the equation that you need to make to work out your time interval. Later in the video, I will show you the difference between a three second, a six second, and a 10 second interval on a day to night time lapse here in Dubai. So make sure you keep watching to the end. I'll set my AE track sensitivity to low. This means that the exposure will slowly change as it gets darker. The last thing I want is the exposure to jump and chop around as it changes in the shot. I'll keep my silent shoot on. I find this doesn't matter too much with long exposures. And then I'll set shoot interval priority off. This means exposure will take priority. So as the exposure lengthens past the interval time, the exposure time will override the interval time. If I had shoot interval priority switched to on, the interval would take priority. When it comes to focusing, I'll focus on the main subject in the shot and then I'll switch it to manual focus. Then I'll let it shoot. Later on, you'll see the difference that it makes. I'm gonna shoot with shoot interval function priority off, and then I'm gonna switch it on a bit later on, and then I'll put the time lapses side by side. Once I've processed the time lapse, this is what it looks like with these settings. As you can see, the steps are minimal and it's very usable. The only downside is that it speeds up as you go into the night as the exposure time lengthens. This is because I had shoot interval priority off and the exposure time took priority. Now there is a way to combat this and these are the settings I use to do this. I'll keep most of the settings the same as I set up for the first time lapse with only a few minor changes. The first change I'll make is with auto ISO minimum shutter speed. I'll change this to four seconds so the shutter speed will not get any longer than four seconds. Next, go to tab one, four of 14, and select interval shoot function. All we need to change here is the shoot interval priority on. With this setting on, what happens is the interval will take priority. This means you'll have a constant time lapse and it won't speed up throughout the time lapse as the exposure time increases. Then I'll start the sequence. And this was the result with these new settings. As you can see, the cars along the road to the left bottom hand side speed up. However, the transition in the sky from day to night stays consistent, whereas in the first time lapse, it speeds up. And to show you this, here are the two time lapses side by side, so you can see what I mean. It is a subtle difference, but it does look different. After doing these two, I did a further three time lapses with a three second interval, a six second interval, and a 10 second interval. If you look at these side by side, you can really see the difference the interval makes. The shorter the interval, the longer the time lapse. The longer the interval, the shorter and the quicker the time lapse and the quicker the movement in your shot. One annoying thing with this view off my balcony is the lights at the top of this tower. They switch between a dark blue to a purple, a bright red and a yellow, and they keep rotating. And that's why you'll see this flicker when it gets dark. That has nothing to do with the aperture changing. 
that has to do with the LED lights having different brightnesses on the top of this building. Again, depending on where you are on the planet, these different interval times will change the look of your time lapse. Just realize that the further away from the equator you are, the longer the interval has to be to give the same amount of time from day to night. And this comes down to experimentation. I do prefer the constant speed of the time lapse, so I'm going to use the second set of settings. The only downside is if you've got anything moving quite fast in the frame, Earlier on, when there's a lot of light about, you'll get this staccato look. This isn't great when it comes to water movement or people moving through the shot, but this is one of the downsides in shooting a day to night time lapse. I'd normally use an ND filter so I could follow the 180 degree shutter rule. However, because I'm shooting and the exposure is changing so much, if you use an ND filter, as it gets to the night time, your exposure times will be so long, the ND filter will cut out so much light that you'd have to bump the ISO up so much to get a good exposure when it's dark. Also, I'm editing this video at the moment, and while I was doing this, I came up with an idea, and it means you guys getting involved if you like. What I'd like to do is get time lapses from different parts of the world, from say around the equator, right through to as far north or as far south as possible. Then I can make a video showing you the differences when you're in a different part of the planet. So if you'd like the chance for your time lapse to be shown on my channel, let me know where you are in the world, what camera you have, as well as sending me your email address. Then in following the settings I've given you today, go out and make a day to night time lapse and I will send you a link to send these files through to. Then we can really see the difference compared to which part of the planet that you're on and where you are and how the sun is coming through that shot. It'll be great to see what you guys can produce and what amazing locations you can find. Just make sure you're in a safe place as you'll have to be there for quite a few hours. Now the examples I've used in this video are mostly of cityscapes and so the city lights help control the exposure. If you're in an area that will be quite dark after the sun has gone down, I suggest having shoot interval priority off and setting the auto ISO minimum shutter speed to around about 15 to 20 seconds, depending on what lens you're using when taking the 500 rule into consideration. So basically following the settings I did for the first time lapse I took. The exposure time will get much longer, but this is good because it won't bump the ISO up as much and therefore you'll get less noisy images. I will be doing a video in a couple of weeks on how to process these time-lapse sequences from day to night. And in that video, I'll have a cityscape, a landscape, and hopefully a time-lapse going into the night sky full of stars. And that's about it. The a7 III in the interval shoot function is a very capable camera. It copes really well with the exposure change, you don't get any lens flicker, and the steps are minimal. One thing that will be interesting to hear is how you've got on with using this function. Have you used it at all or are you yet to use it? Let me know in the comments below. It'd be great to hear how all of you are getting on with this interval shoot function and whether you've been successful in getting a day to night time lapse. I much prefer using this function over S and Q mode. You get much better quality time lapse sequences from the camera and although the workflow is a lot longer, you do get really nice, good quality time lapses and you'll be able to shoot them at a much higher resolution. As always, if you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. And for weekly tutorials, hints and tips in photography and videography, subscribe and turn on notifications. I'll see you next time.